don't listen to the Evolve podcast. If you this is your first time here, don't even listen to this episode. Skip it. Move on. It's not the podcast for you. In fact, this episode and many others, I am not creating for most of you. What I'm creating it for is that one unique individual, that one person that is not looking to lose five pounds or 10 pounds or get a little bit of motivation. You see, the Evolve podcast was never created for that person. I don't want you to show up here hoping and thinking that you're going to get the tips and the tricks that will get you 10 pounds lighter by next week. So don't listen to this episode. Don't subscribe to the podcast. Don't stay with us. Don't go back and listen to any of our other episodes. If you are the type of person that's looking to go all in on your weight loss plan and lose 10 pounds in two weeks, move on. There's other places. There's other podcasts. Jump on TikTok. There's a lot of quote unquote experts out there to follow. Welcome to the Evolve Podcast. Evolve your body, evolve your mind, evolve your soul, and evolve your tribe. And now it's time to disrupt. Welcome back to the Evolve Podcast, where evolved men and women come to disrupt, connect, and get inspired. We're cultivating a strong, lean body, an educated mind, and an evolved purpose driven heart are the status symbol of choice. I'm your host, Steve Cutler. And today I'm going to tell you again. Don't listen to this podcast. But before we do, if you decide to stay, I want to thank you for listening to the Evolve Podcast. You see, the Evolve Podcast is part of our passion and mission to provide no cost of consumer content that will help you disrupt your life and evolve into your highest self. The Evolve Podcast community continues to grow, and I want to make sure that you and other people can continue to disrupt and evolve and that people can find us. So if you haven't yet, do me a favor and give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. The Apple Podcasts, Spotify platforms are the ones that help us to reach more people and the ratings and reviews really help us to grow the show and achieve our mission of helping millions of people evolve into their highest versions. And now on to the show. The other day I was training a client, one of my top CEO clients in the gym, and I was having him do some rope slams. Now, what this is, you take a weighted rope and you're working that battle rope up and down and slamming it uh, down on the ground and picking it up and slamming it again. And this is one of the most phenomenal exercises, not only to do metabolic and cardiovascular type conditioning, but it develops a significant amount of strength and strength endurance with this particular movement. This movement is great because it expands your ability to get full extension through the posterior chain and full flexion through the anterior chain of the body. And the interesting thing is after the second set, there was a gentleman that came up and he asked a very um, normal, what I would say, question. He says, that's a really interesting exercise. What muscle does it work? Is it the chest? And I said, actually, it's not about the muscle. It's about integrating the entire body. And so I explained to him the mechanics of it and the benefits and how it would help metabolic conditioning and how it would help cardiorespiratory conditioning and how it helps to integrate the entire body into a movement rather than just isolating certain muscles to get a result. We are integrating everything into a strong and powerful system. Now, a strong and powerful system is not what most people are after. A strong and powerful system means you are the type of person that is committed to your overall health. You're committed to your overall wealth. But how does this tie into what I said at the very beginning? How does this tie in, you might be asking, to you telling me not to listen to this episode? And this is the reason. Most of us want to segment our lives out. In fact, we live in not the information age anymore. We live in an age of translation. You see, information is everywhere. If I wanted to get 50 different ideas of how I could build a bigger chest, if I wanted to get 300 ideas of how I can build a better butt, that information is out there. That's not what we're at, about at Evolve. In fact, for quite some time, I think even 
until I started the podcast. And now for about three plus years, I've been told, Steve, if you want the podcast to grow faster, you have to niche down and you have to focus just on one thing. And I said, well, if that's what it takes to grow the podcast fast, we're not going to go that route. We're going to grow it slow. Because I believe that there is a certain person out there that's not unlike me. I believe that there is a certain person out there that says to themselves, I know intuitively that there is integration in life and that if I get better by learning how to master my body, that that will also help me to learn how to master my mind. And that will also drive me deeper into my soul. And then that will also help me to attract and keep a tribe of people around me that then create this cyclical nature to take me back to body, mind, soul, tribe over and over and over again. And by doing so, I will evolve. You see, the difference between what happens in America these days and what Evolve is about is I don't care if you lose 20 or 30 pounds and you get into great shape and you stay there for two or three weeks and then you go back. You go back to what you did before. You go back to the way you used to eat. See, that's not what Evolve is about. The reason our clients are getting amazing results is because they're getting amazing results in all areas. In fact, recently I was talking to an executive that I've worked with for uh, several months at this point. And I said, how are you feeling? He says, well, let me sum it up like this. I was having a conversation with a colleague at lunch the other day. And he asked me, so how's that evolve thing? How's that coaching going? And he says, well, I guess the most simple and easy way for me to put it is I'm over 30 pounds down in body fat. I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm squatting over 300 pounds. And I just realized that I've doubled my income. I hadn't even looked at it. And, but when I did, I realized that I'm on track to double my income. I looked at my client and said, that's amazing. The first two I knew, the third one I didn't. He said, yeah, the coaching is working. Now, maybe doubling your income might not be what your goal is. I don't care. But the person that will listen to the Evolve podcast on an ongoing basis, the person that will subscribe, the person that will show up is the person that realizes that there are aspects of their life right now that if they stay open to it, they will grow in multiple areas. You see, the evolved man does not just chase a bigger chest. The evolved woman does not just go after amazing abs. Evolved men and women focus on evolving in every area and every aspect of life. They ask themselves one main question. That question is, how do I want to look, feel, and show up to life 10 years from now? Now, I know that sounds crazy, right? How do I want to look, feel, and show up to life 10 years from now? And the reason evolved men and women ask that question is because the choices that you make today will give you the body, the mind, the soul, and eventually the tribe of people around you that you will have 10 years from now. The small daily habits that you put in build a body. Build a mind, open up the soul, and develop, strengthen, and temper the tribe that you want to have 10 years from now. Now, there's a lot of weight loss programs out there. There's a lot of strength training programs out there. There's a lot of mental fitness programs, meditation programs. There's a lot of podcasts that dive deep into every single area of life. And they focus and they niche. And don't get me wrong, I listen to a lot of those podcasts because I still find those things interesting. But I don't want you to listen to the Evolve podcast. And I don't want you to even continue on with this episode unless you're the type of person that says, I need to evolve. And I need to understand that the only way to do that, rather than just make small changes, is to dig in and become a different person. So what does that look like? Well, the evolved man realizes that he lives his life through his body. Everything he does, the way he expresses himself 
is through the physical first. How do men go downhill? Well, they do it by abusing things that hurt their body. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, all, all of these things in some way, shape, or form abuse the body. Think about it. If you want to show up as a great man, you want to show up as a great husband, father, boyfriend, whatever it is, you do it through your body first and foremost. If you're sitting here 50 pounds overweight and you've got a massive gut and you got the dicky do syndrome where your, your belly sticks out further than your dicky do, you're not going to make your life into an evolved life because you don't have the physical capacity to fight for what's right in your life. And so the evolved man gets himself in shape. The evolved man leans up, develops strength, and has flexibility, mobility, whatever you want to call it, to do the things in life that matter. You want to know what the number one way to feel old is? Just get weak and inflexible and don't develop your cardiovascular ability. And I guarantee you're going to feel old. Men, you want to show up to life? Strength train. Make sure that your cardio is appropriate and have the right amount of mobility or flexibility to live life in a healthy, joint, mobilized, free way. Now, the evolved man, once he starts to evolve his body, he realizes that in order to evolve his life, he has to discipline his mind because it's only through disciplined habits will he achieve the body of his dreams. And only through those disciplined habits will he open himself up to new concepts and new ideas. And when he's going through the process of becoming more evolved, he realizes that there are some things that he does just for the sake of learning. He reads, he listens to podcasts, he listens to audiobooks, and he does it to consume information. And he does that because the consumption of curated information is important to him. But then it doesn't supplant the key form of growth. Let me say that again. Gaining knowledge, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, reading books does not supplant the key form of growth. And that's through application and development of skill. If you want to grow your mind, you want to become a more evolved human with a strong mind, you have to have the habits that implement over time the person that you want to be. There is a massive difference between top performers in any area and any level of life, business, profession, fatherhood, and those that just get by. The top performers have a different mindset. The top performers execute differently. The top performers have habits that drive their mind to a better state on a regular basis. I don't know of one successful person in my entire life that gets up later than about 4, 5, maybe 5.30. The discipline, the consistency has to be there. Disciplining the body, disciplining the mind eventually leads to a point where we run into roadblocks. One of our episodes, we interviewed author Gay Hendricks, and he talked about it as an upper limit problem. You've heard Miles and I talk about it before in another episode about limiting beliefs. Whatever you want to call it, I don't really care. But at a certain point, you reach a soul blockage. Something you're doing is going to run up into a blockage of your soul. Now, the way that you figure out what that looks like is by digging a little bit deeper and wasting away and chipping away and pushing apart the sands and the stones that are covering up your true self inside of your soul. You see, it's not about finding yourself, this whole idea of becoming an evolved soul. It's about understanding and discovering what's already inside of you. You don't need to go on a long journey external. You need to wipe, wipe away all of the things that are getting in the way of your deep soul. 
So the evolved man starts to get himself in great shape and he understands that through discipline that he builds his best body. And so he starts reading books, listening to podcasts, going to audible and maybe even doing master classes. And he might be practicing some of these things on a small P level, small practice, but, but the way that he grows is by starting to lean into the practice of developing the skills. And that's how his mind expands. And then every once in a while, he realizes that he keeps going back and back and back to the same problem. And that's when the soul is telling him that it's time to expand into the deeper portion of who he is. And so through, through meditation, through journaling, and through a lot of hard work, he eventually gets, and he begins to shift into this different identity. And that's what the evolved man does. And then when the evolved man becomes more evolved, and he's taken a giant leap because physically he's stronger, mentally he's tougher, and emotionally and spiritually he's more connected, he now evolves his tribe. Sometimes that means he finds a different tribe. But sometimes that means that he realizes that as the leader in part of his tribe, he needs to show up in a different way. And he takes a leadership role to step into the future in a positive and progressive way. The evolved man is not just looking to lose 10 pounds. The evolved woman doesn't look for a shortcut. She doesn't placate herself by saying, I just need to lose 10 pounds. The evolved woman realizes that it is only through the strength of her body that she can show up in the most powerful way to life. Moms, you understand this. You created something inside of you. It grew inside of you for several months, and then you did a miraculous thing and delivered that amazing life. And you understand the power that comes through the discipline of the body better than what men do because you've grown a second life inside of you. But in order to quote unquote, get your body back, you have to shift your thinking. You have to go from this idea that you put yourself last to you put yourself first. I know many of you have seen and heard the concept of the big rocks, small rocks, sand in a jar. And if you've never actually done the exercise, go grab a bucket, grab a jar, and do it. Get some sand, throw it in there, put some small rocks in, and then throw some big rocks, and you realize it doesn't fit. But you throw the big rocks in first, the small rocks fill in, and then the sand fills in the rest, and you can fit everything in that jar, in that bucket. And you are a big rock. When you start to take care of yourself, when you take care of your body, when you take care of your muscles, your flexibility, when you nurture yourself, when you show up and present to the world in positive and productive ways, now you have power, strength, wisdom, that allows you, as a mom, to show up in every other area of life in a more positive way. You live what you teach. You want your kids to be healthy, and so you talk about doing healthy snacks. And here's the thing I can tell you, after about a quarter of a century of being in the health and fitness space, is you will be much more powerful just by living it than teaching it. That's not to say you shouldn't teach your kids how to eat well, move with fun, playful, exuberant movement. But if you're out there doing it with them, you now have created a barrier from you and the rest of the obese society. And you have created a bridge between you and your kids. As an evolved woman, you put yourself first. And then what happens is mentally, you start to feel better. You realize that putting yourself first physically means that you have more mental capacity. You become a better nurturer, a better friend, a better connector, a better teacher, a better everything. Because by putting yourself first, an evolved woman then starts to emerge because she has 
physical strength. She has flexibility. She has cardiovascular ability. And so when you thought you couldn't do one more thing before, now this new evolved body shows up and your mind opens up. And as your mind opens up, every once in a while, you start to feel the pangs of the soul say, this is exactly where I need to be. And you tap in to a deeper level of your soul and you feel a greater sense of purpose in all areas of life. And you see yourself as an evolved woman, not just because you're there to help and to serve and to do the things that you tell yourself, but because you are just enough who you are. You are just enough by just being. Your purpose in life is not just to serve, but your purpose in life is to enjoy life, to lead a happy, joyful life, to move forward with confidence, to move past old dogmas and old stigmas that are holding you back. And as you do that, your soul starts to expand. And just like with the men, you now have the base to evolve your tribe. You see, the evolved man and the evolved woman, they don't just go searching for the quick fix solution. They want long-term results. They ask themselves the question, who do I want to be? What do I want to look like? And how do I want to feel and show up to life 10 years from now? If you're a mother or a father, I want you to ask yourself that question in conjunction with visualizing where your kids will be 10 years from now. And then when your kids reach your age, where do you want them to be? If you're out of shape physically, if you are mentally not disciplined, if you are spiritually disconnected and you live on a hair trigger with your emotions, is that who you want your kids to be? Because that's what you're teaching them. You see, the evolved man and woman realizes that they are not their past and they are not even their present. But what is in the future is completely within their control. So why do I not want you to listen to this episode, subscribe to the podcast, or continue to listen to or go back to listen to episodes? Well, it's because if you showed up here looking for a quick fix, you are not my audience. You are not the person that's going to connect with what I'm talking about because one week we might be talking about deep meditation and breath work. And the next week we might be talking about nutrition. And hey, you know what? The next week we may even be talking to an artist to talk about creativity. And so it won't resonate with you. It will only resonate with the person who understands that an evolved life is a life that is worth living because he or she is evolving and growing in all areas. I got to take you back to 2020. You see, in 2020, I looked around and I saw a lot of people struggling. And one of the reasons why they were struggling is not just because of the pandemic, not just because of the lockdown, but those were byproducts of a deeper problem. When the lockdowns happened and people got stuck at home, something happened. Weak points were made clear. People who didn't have evolved ways of thinking broke down physically, mentally, spiritually, in several ways. Relationships burst. People ballooned. Minds became more anxious. Mindsets became more depressed. It's pretty hard to be anxious. It's pretty difficult to be depressed. And it's pretty hard to be out of shape. It's pretty difficult to constantly lose your temper when you are evolving in all areas of life. And unfortunately, 2020 put the pressure on. And a lot of people felt that pressure and they didn't even recognize because they weren't even awake to the fact that when the one, two or three things that they were used to doing on a regular basis went away, they had nothing else to fall back on. Maybe they did the bread baking challenge because that was the thing on TikTok. And so they learned how to bake bread and they stopped baking bread after they added another 10 to 20 pounds because they just loved the bread and butter and kept eating that along with all the other crap that they ate. 
but evolved men and women or men and women looked at that as an opportunity to say, Hmm, my job is shut down. Okay. I can't go out like I used to, but I'm still fascinated by and interested in so many other things that I'm going to evolve. And that's where the evolve podcast came from is my co-host who, you know, and love he and I talked during the pandemic. And I said, how are you doing? He said, Steve, I've never been better. Certain things are automatically shut down right now, which essentially just means I've got more time to play in other areas. And we were in lockstep on that concept. We moved forward with play. We created this podcast as a form of play, as a form of conversation, as a form of philosophy, philosophy and philosophical discussion and discovery because one area of life was shut down and we did it because we believe that there is a more evolved way. So are we going to grow the podcast quick? Well, history tells us we're not now. Sure. We're growing about three to four times this year, what we did last year. And we're grateful for that, but we'll grow when we find you. If you are the person that wants to evolve and is not looking to just drop 10 pounds and just make a little change. So again, if you've been listening to this episode and you've made it all the way through, welcome. Welcome to your stage of evolution. I'm excited you're here. I want you to join us on the journey of evolving, not only as individuals, but as a community. Because I believe that as we evolve as individuals, we can evolve as communities, we can evolve as businesses, we can iterate to where 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, hell, even 50 years from now, when our kids have kids and we're passing on the life to them as we sunset into the distance, I think society can evolve. I don't think we have to continue to go through a two-year or four-year cycle. If we get a little bit better and then we go downhill as a society, I think that we have the opportunity to evolve. And so if you're still here, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining us on the journey. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to ask yourself this question. Who do I want to be? How do I want to show up? And how do I want to feel 10 years from now? If you're still here, I want you to then ask yourself one more question. How can I evolve as a human being? Where have I been making excuses? What do I need to lean into? And how do I need to show up for myself to create my ultimate evolution? So if you're still here, that's my challenge to you. And I would also ask that if you know of anyone else that wants to evolve, talk to them and share this episode with them. Because this episode and this podcast is probably not for you, but it might be for somebody else. And on that note, folks, it is time for us to wrap up another Evolve podcast. I want to thank you, our listeners, for joining us for another episode of the Evolve podcast. I am Steve Cutler reminding you that it takes time and consistency to evolve. But first, you have to disrupt. And now it's time for you to get out there and evolve. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Evolve Podcast. Follow us on your favorite podcast app. And if you haven't done so, please give us a rating. As an independent podcast, it really helps us get more reach. This podcast is part of our mission to help millions of people evolve into the best versions of themselves. Please check out our coaching services at evolve-cast.com or pick up some of our Evolve merch. Until next time, keep evolving.